Steve are telling them for a while internally, you are the CEO of your career. And they came back to us and said, yes, that's great. We get it. We understand it. We should be the CEO of our careers, but give us the tools. And skills is really providing this, this missing link. Welcome, everyone. I'm Richard Parfit, the marketing manager at Iventive, and I'm delighted to be joined today by Adrian Stabley, who is the group head of skills development solutions at Zurich Insurance. Adrian is a veteran of multiple Iventive events. Uh, he's based in Switzerland and uh, joined Zurich Insurance in June 2015, where he has uh, full responsibility for the learning and development agenda globally at Zurich Insurance. He's also responsible for their skills framework and skills library, which is going to be part of what we're talking about today. Prior to joining Zurich, he was at IBM for, I think, nearly 20 years. Uh, we had a variety of roles, both in and outside of HR. Adrian, we're so grateful that you could join us today. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing very well, thank you. And thank you very much for having me. Yeah, it was great to have you with us. So um, I mentioned the the skills um, focus in in the intro there and you know we've we've been running l d events all over the world this year and it really seems like this phrase skills based organizations is um reaching a, a peak of interest should we say it's it's been around for a while but it seems like there's a lot the intensity of interest has really grown um in the last year or so um but it does seem that organizations are going about it in a variety of different ways um, depending on on their context. So I just wonder from your perspective as Zurich, how do you define a skills-based organization? I'll start you, off, start you with an easy question. Yeah, the, the easy one first. Yes. <laughs> so, so for us, um, a skills-based organization is really an enterprise that prioritizes identification, development, but also the utilization of skills within the workforce to drive business outcomes. So it is really... The, the secret ingredient, right, that we add into the mix in order to further drive our business. So we mean for Zurich that we were embedding skills into every aspect of employee development, from learning to career progression, and also to even role and job design. So by focusing on skills, we aim to create the more agile, responsive, and also future-ready organization then can adopt in the ever-changing um, market demand. So Zurich, obviously, we are not excluded from all the constant changes and we are exposed to. And we truly believe that with em the embedding of skills into learning and career development, um, mm -hmm. that we will have a more agile way um, and also a more simplified way in how our colleagues can develop themselves, but also their careers. I love that definition. As I was um, as I was preparing for this conversation, it occurred to me that um, when we when we talk to organisations about this, sometimes they're talking very much about cultural things, sometimes about very technical, technological based um, ideas. And it seems like your definition really covers the full um, the full spectrum of those aspects. Um, and like I say, so, sometimes we talk to organisations and they're really focused on getting leaders to. Um, adopt these particular cultures and encourage these particular um, ways of going about work. And sometimes there's a there's a tech platform that is really enabling a lot of what they're trying to do. Um, so I just wonder from your point of view, what are the key components that you need to have in place in terms of frameworks and capabilities and the, the technological part of it as well yeah. Um, yeah. to deliver a skills-based approach? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, the, the first, I mean, one of the kind of the, the foundation um, of everything is a comprehensive um, skills taxonomy, um, which we decided um, to build in-house together with our colleagues from the, the job families, from the business area. So we um, created now the Zurich Global Skills Library, which is being infused in all the various aspects um, I mentioned before. Then we have our in-house developed career development tool also here, maybe a little bit a different approach than other companies, but um, based on various reasons, um, we decided not to use um, a solution that's available on the market. We um, decided to build our own tool. Um, which we connect obviously with our LMS, with the learning content, where we also mapped all the content um, against the skills. 
And extremely important, of course, data analytics now to, to really understand where are we going, um, in which direction do the employees and develop their skills, where do we might have gaps. Um, and so this is kind of more from the, the infrastructure and, and what we need to put in place. And what you were just mentioning before, Richard, this is the whole, we called it now when we were rolling out all of this, the change management approach. So all of these tools are wonderful, um, but employees, we need to help the employees to understand how these tools and when they, everything comes together is really helping them um, to drive their careers and their personal development in a more also self-driven way. And we put a lot of effort into this whole change management piece. And also on, in this change management topic, like in everything else, we always say it will never be done. It will never be complete. So it's always ongoing, ongoing. And we try certain various different um, ways in how we want to engage with our employees um, on this regard. Yeah, so there's a, there's a lot of people there that need to be on board with the idea, right? It's not just, you don't have to just convince the L&D team here. There's the whole organization needs to be on board with this. Can exactly. you tell us a bit about how you went about, uh, how you went about doing that? Yeah, so we first um, started in, in HR, obviously, um, and then um, reached out to our colleagues from the job family. So I think most companies have job families in place. Um, because they were then our kind of extended team and they really were extremely essential in order to get us really where we are today because they had to look at all their role profiles, the global role profiles they had created in the past and we asked them to really adjust them. So we wanted uh, them to use a more, um, like a simpler way, a more, um, employee centering way in how we describe an output oriented way, how we describe the roles, and then to also define their skills and map the skills to each of their roles. So they were a huge support and was a huge piece of work um, for all of them to really, really get this done. And by doing this, this work, we of course started also to understand much better where we might um, get some resistance or where we might need to put more emphasis in really explaining um, why we think this is the, the right thing to do. And then when we got ready for rollout, we worked with each of our business units. So we have 40 plus business units at Zurich um, where we engaged with these teams. We really individually wanted to make sure that they feel comfortable with it. And also um, by doing that, of course, we we always experienced a certain set of similar questions coming for everyone, but then each view had different requirements or, or different focus on certain aspects of, of, of our entire approach. So this was for our team was probably not the most efficient way to go about this, but now looking back, it was the approach which definitely had the highest um, impact. I think when we now also look at adoption rates and how the BUs then really up like onboarded the whole tools and processes, but then also represented, um, as you call it, my journey and um, internally, the tool and the approach towards their employees. Okay. So by taking things a little slower, you're able to get more people on, involved and have more of an impact. Exactly. And really listen to them what they need and not just one size fits all, which we, as we have smaller markets, we have medium countries and we have large ones. And also the HR teams in these various business units really vary. So there, it, it really looks can look free, really different between BU one BU to the other. So we really want to make sure that we can cater for their needs as, as good as possible. Yeah. And, and I, just as a follow up to that, I wonder what was it that convinced you that this was going to be, that this was needed, that this was the right approach to take? We're, we're so um bombarded with buzzwords at times in in l d about the the latest the latest approach the latest framework that you need to be doing what was it about the skills based approach that you were that convinced you yeah so we do and did um employee engagement surveys like other um larger company um companies um again again so every year or the other time so we did it every half year and the questions around career development and learning and development, unfortunately, <laughs> were always the ones who received them a lower, lower scores. 
Um, and of course, we did deep dives. We, we had focus groups. We asked also in the countries to explore more about what are the reasons. And the, the reason was definitely that we were not really able to provide more guidance or enough guidance to the employees that they could drive their career also themselves without necessarily needing them, the manager who is um, really guiding them intensively or is coaching them, spending time with them. There was also a, a, a kind of desire, I think, that they wanted to be in control as we were telling them for a while internally, you are the CEO of your career. And they came back to us and said, yes, that's great. We get it. We understand it. We should be the CEO of our careers, but give us the tools. And skills is really providing this, this missing link. Uh, to really provide the tools and it's also providing a simplicity to all of it. So I now had for the second year the career conversations with my team um, skills based, and I was amazed myself to, to realize and to really experience how much simpler everything got because you don't need any more to really find out what you now exactly mean, you know, where do you meet, meet each other on what is now this development area? As now it's the skill and the skills are defined and it gives you already the answer. And then it is so much simpler, so much more straightforward. And then the tool which is helping you with um, the development recommendation is just then the cherry on the cake, I think at the end, which um, is really, I think, um, helping many, many of our um 60,000 employees to feel more in charge um, of their career and where they want to go. Yeah, so you really empower the workforce to kind of take control of their own career development as a career development tool as much as it is an organizational yes. development tool. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I wonder if, you know, I started off asking rather cruelly for your, your exact definition um, of, of the skills-based organization, but in a lot of ways, it sounds like by empowering the employees, by creating the, um, the, the the cultures whereby they could, as you'll say, be the CEO of their own careers. It's as much about galvanizing energy and action around individual skills as much as it is um, and anything else. So um, is, is that part of the value of talking about being a skills-based organization that it helps to create a sense of urgency among employees around what it means to upskill and reskill themselves. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think we specifically mean HR um, and then even more in L and D we hear this upskilling and reskill now for years and years and years. And it is it says everything and nothing, right? So we also realized that this is not really a message that we can um, just constantly share with the employees. You need to re and upskill you what what do we mean with that? So the other beauty um, of introducing skills is that it's really, as you just said, it's really provi provides this focus and kind of an answer of what we mean with this re and upskilling in a very concrete way, as in the tool that we are providing and the employees assess their skills and they can then also compare and their skills, as you call it, skills passport with other role profiles um, that exist in the company. And immediately, and through a spider diagram, they can see um, how much coverage kind of, of skills they see and also where are the gaps. And if there are then gaps, they can identify them, they mark this in the system and they get development recommendations. So it is getting a topic which might be for colleagues just really being in the business and not worrying about l and like we do um, 12 hours a day. And it really provides this answer in a very practical and, and yeah, practical and efficient way um, what we mean with that. And I think this is what we see so far is also um, very welcomed by the employees as um, we, we get positive feedback and we see the adoption of the tool um, is, is even on a higher level than we have some internally expected at first. Oh, well, that, I mean, congratulations. That uh, sounds like... Um... Sounds like it's had a real impact then. And it goes back to what you're saying about simplifying it. You're almost almost gamifying it in a way by showing them the the, the gaps vis-a-vis -vis other other employees and making it really straightforward for them about what they need to do rather than having all this background noise about AI technology change. Oh, what am I going to do? My career is going to fall apart. No, here it is. Here's what I need to focus on. 
Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Well, um, okay, so that's that's on the organizational level. I want to go on more more an individual track now. So from from your point of view, you know, you're you're an employee within um within the organization as much as anyone else. What what skills have you been prioritizing in your own your own development? I have to be, um, I really want to be honest. Um, I struggle <laughs> as well. As, as I struggle, like everyone else is uh, really finding enough time um, yeah. to to do, to work on my own development. But there were uh, some technology advancements uh, lately that uh, really forced me um, to, to look into certain um, aspects. So I, at the time I could find, I really invested into um, prompt engineering. So I'm still, I mean, Amazed by by Chat GPT, or we at Zurich we have our Zurich Chat. This is then our internal um, Chat GPT, which um, ensures that that we, what we enter and our data is is, is kept uh, inside um, and within the Zurich walls. And and it's really I'm still fascinated. I mean, it's still my still my blowing what what you can do and and how this is changing everything. And uh, when I realized that the prompting, for instance, is so essential, I, I invested some time into that. At the same time, we received um, Copilot. Um, so mm-hmm. also Copilot, very similar also there. How do you really get the most out of it? Also has a lot to do with the right prompt. Mm-hmm. And then what me and my team, we just learned on the go, kind of, on the job was really how to also develop um, an internal application um, with our colleagues from technology and operations. What does it take really to start from the scratch with um, a tool and then to evolve it? And what are all the questions that need to be answered and how to ensure that it stays employee-centric and so on? So to design, to help to develop a tool, but then also to have the business ownership of it, of something that's in house, is definitely also uh, was definitely a new skill um, we, yeah. we could learn. Yeah, but that that says something to the success of the skills based organization as as well, doesn't it? Because there are, there's so many organizations where people are having to try and learn things like prompt engineering on their own personal ChatGPT accounts because the business won't let them use it or hasn't set up an internal tool like like you have. So that must it, that if reflecting on that, that must give you a lot of um, a lot of pride in what you've helped create. Yeah, so we, we, I mean, what is the biggest pride for me when I hear business leaders at Zurich now using skills as a language, right? We also internally, we and try to still infuse the term kind of skills as the currency of the future, um, which I think is also putting um, the nail on its head. It's, it's something that is easily and well understood by the employees. And um, we, we asked some colleagues um, if they hear this term um, skills as the currency of the future, what, how would they interpret that? What do they think we mean with that? And when we then were reading their interpretations, they were all spot on. So there was not one who really had a major misunderstanding of what it means. And this is an, another very positive thing. So and for me, I'm really, really proud, first of all, of the work my, my team did in the last couple of years, where we are now, we're really still embedding, we're still embedding, we haven't completed the rollout, so it will be end of Q1 next year, when we completed our global rollout, and now when we see, and also sometimes hear that an, a colleague of mine had lunch with another colleague, and this colleague said to her, Hey, I had my career conversation. Oh my God, it's so much better now with my journey, our tool. I mean, this is this is really it where I think, yes, yes, it reached the employees and we had the impact that we wanted to have. So that's that's the most satisfying part, I would say. Yeah, and when when they're using your language without even necessarily realizing that it's originated with 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 you, that really shows that it's uh it's entered the lexicon, hasn't it? So um no well, again congratulations it sounds like you've had a real uh, a really big impact with it so uh, again thinking about some of the conversations we've heard this year with other organizations some of them are really just getting started with this skills based approach some of them are perhaps still skeptical about it um if you were speaking to another head of learning now who's saying right I want to get started with the skills based approach I want to want to get our leaders bought into it 
what would you recommend as their their first step? How would you, how would you recommend they get started? So the first most important step is find an ally in the business. Find, identify on one side a senior leader as high up as possible in the organization um, who is understanding what you want to achieve and who is bringing also this idea of what you want to do into the board meetings, into the exco meetings, however your meetings and um, your organizational titles are called. Just someone who can bring this in from a business perspective, who also understand how this will improve so many aspects on how we collaborate and how we develop and how we work together. Then um, also through that, hopefully you identify the business areas which can be used as an early adopter or as a pilot or just an area small and try it out. Don't overthink everything until the very end, because if you do that, you will never start to roll out or to pilot anything. So when I talk to peers from other companies, they all really confirm that. So if you want to just go out until you have this whole topic, which is so complex and it's so many different facets, if you want to have ironed out every little detail before you go out, you will never do it and most probably you will fail. So start with something with a group that has the enthusiasm, who has the positive energy, who is then we co-creating with you. And once you have a kind of success story, others want to get the same and others will um, chip, in, chip in. Stakeholder management generally extremely important on all levels of the organization. Um, and then that you have the right tools. Um, I would strongly recommend you have uh, like look for an AI-enabled technology that is serving um, you and the organization and continue to foster a learning culture. So if employees don't find the time to learn, they will also not find it when you introduce skills. So this is just uh, another big, big also for us, an um, important area on challenge, how can we um, help our colleagues that they can also identify the right amount of time to do what they need to do in order to develop. Um, and, and this is remains, I think, for all of us, a huge challenge. And skills, unfortunately, haven't really um, provided the solution to that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, OK, th thank you. So um, again, it's coming back to your um, your, your watch of simplifying things in the way that an L&D team goes about it as well. Get something tangible, get, an, get a key ally on board, um, something you can you can measure and demonstrate the impact and then grow it from there. Um, fantastic. Well, um, I know we're coming up to the, uh, the the end of the time that we had you booked in for, but um, I want to thank you again for, for giving us your time and for sharing the the way that you define skills-based approaches in, in Zurich, how you went about doing it, the tools that you put in place, um, a bit of your own your own personal journey there as well, and and your advice for, for other, other L&D leaders. Really appreciate your time. Um, and we look forward to seeing you, hopefully, at a, an event event uh, very soon. Yeah, I hope so too, and thank you so much, Richard. Thank you for having me.